Hello again YouTube. After about a year, maybe a little more, I'm finally making another video. I'll just start off by saying I apologize for waiting so long. I said I was going to make a video on our solar hot water system and here it is now September and summer is almost over and finally getting around to doing it. So uh, there's been some other things happen around here this summer. I'll kind of show you the place. We've put in a chicken coop and a vineyard and a garden. and So it's been a busy summer. I actually uh, retired at the beginning of the summer. So uh, every day now is like Saturday. So it's pretty nice. So back to the solar hot water system. You can see the uh, panels on the roof there. Okay, so I ordered those. I ordered the complete solar hot water heater system from a company. I believe it was maybe called SolarHotWaterHeaters.com or something like that. But I'll find it and put a link in the description, and uh, I may even show you the copy of the invoice. Thinking the whole thing was about four thousand. But that is uh, two fairly large panels and uh, included a 120 gallon tank and the pumps and all the plumbing needed and everything. But then again, I probably spent that much having it installed because it turned out to be quite a task. And uh, we had to get the plumber and the roofer involved in getting those panels up there and all that plumbing installed. But uh, this is... Uh, I believe it's called an active system where the hot water or the water itself is pumped directly through those panels. Some systems, um, uh, I think it's, uh, I think indirect is where indirect is where uh, it pumps a uh, solution through there that's kind of like an antifreeze or something, and that circulates through your tank and heats your water inside. And the benefit of those, of course, is you can don't have to worry about those in the winter. So since I'm kind of right on the edge, we don't have a lot of super cold days in the winter. I went ahead and got this system, uh, the, a direct system. And uh, what I did this last winter was when the first sign of freezing weather came, I just uh, drained the lines and uh, shut it down. And we just used our standard backup. Um, tankless water heaters all winter long and then as soon as we got by any chance of freezing weather again this spring I uh, just turned them back on and they provide all the hot water we need during the I'd say eight months of the year um, so anyway the uh, installation turned out to be quite a quite a little deal you can, I don't know if you can see but they had to be installed at where there was a slight downward angle. So the water comes in at the very top and it slows, flows down through one and then back up to the other and down it and then out. And then through some popping in my attic and down to a tank inside a closet in our uh, laundry room. So I guess we'll just go look at that right now. Okay, we are now in the laundry room, and as you can see, we just put this in a little closet in here. And uh, we originally thought about putting this in the garage and just thought it would just take up way too much space. And so this was gonna be a coat closet opening out to the hallway. And we just changed the design at the last minute and made this uh, door on the inside here. And uh, this became our hot water tank closet. So the design on this is fairly simple. I know it looks, it looks a little uh, complicated, but basically all it amounts to is your uh, water source comes in right back here and flows into your tank, just like a standard hot water tank. Um, so it goes in the tank and then uh, whenever the sensor inside the tank detects that the water temperature that's up at 
the roof is hotter than what's in the tank it this little controller box right here it's it's got a motor pump plug, plugged into it I mean so it's fairly simple it's all it's doing is checking temperatures constantly and when that temperature difference happens it kicks on this little pump right here and at the same time it opens up well, that's a little mess it opens up this uh, motorized valve so um, it allows the water to come back down so when the pump shuts off that valve also closes so basically it's just constantly replenishing the hot water that's in that tank and once it's gotten to I've got a setting on here of 170 degrees so once this tank gets to 170 this pump won't kick on anymore and when I walked in here it had just it just run for just a minute and so it might kick back on here while we're here but so um, so the hot water comes out of the tank back here and this right here is a mixing valve since the water is so hot we are running adding some cold to it through this valve and it's got adjustment on there but it's maxed out at 140 so we've cooled it down just a little bit um, so then we get to uh, what we had some problems with initially when we first put this in even before we moved in here we came in here some days while the building was going on and we saw a puddle of water here on the floor and we could not figure it out we we searched all in the attic it, we, it just it drove us crazy for a, probably a month and then finally we were here one day when it happened and uh, this pop-off valve right here was uh, popping off and throwing water down at that time this went down into that little pan at the bottom and there's one of those little safety switches that when it detects water in there it cuts off your water supply now of course we weren't aware of that but so what we found was we it was just uh the even though the valve was what was sent with the tank it was popping off uh temperature related i believe as opposed to pressure so we had a mess so the plumber came out and put this ballast tank on there thinking that would solve the problem and it did not so he came out again and what he did was ran a line up into our attic and tied it on to uh, some drain lines we have up there so now when it kicks off it just takes the water and sends it up and goes outside the back of the house so this uh, this past winter as we went into winter I realized I had to figure out a way to drain them well he had uh, he had put drain lines here so I didn't want to have to run hoses outside of the house so I just tied on hoses to his lines to his valves and then tied them on right here to the bottom of his drain and now I've got them set where I can turn these on or open these valves and uh, open those valves right there and cut the pump off and it will drain drain those lines completely at least it gets all the water inside the house where it's temperature controlled and out of the panels where it can't freeze and that worked well we went through the winter without any problems came back in here at the beginning of summer and just did the reverse close those two valves up there close these two valves here plugged in the pump and started working so looks like it's not going to kick on while we're here it's uh, believe it or not it's September 18th and it's right about noon it's already 90 degrees with about a 55 percent humidity it is a hot day we are we are having an extended summer all right so I'm gonna go show you one more thing about the system and uh, we'll wrap it up okay now I'm gonna give you a little bit of demonstration about uh, how this system ties into our backup uh, we have a tankless water heater 
that's uh, just for the bathrooms and it's outside the house. And then we have a second one that's near the kitchen that it just heats water for the kitchen. Now, they're only needed when we don't have enough hot water from the solar system. So I'm going to show you what happens. I've got this one set on 120 degrees and this is the tankless heater control. So I can go over here and turn on the hot water in the shower and you'll see this uh, priority light came on. And that red light tells you that it's the uh, tankless heater is now working. So it's sending 120 degree water to the shower. And it's such a long run that it still takes a couple minutes to get here. But what you're going to see happen here in just a second is that uh, the water from the tankless, from the solar water tank, just now it arrived. That turned off that heater. See those lights went off and it's this P1 tells you that it has it is no longer the priority heater and that the water going through it's hotter than it could heat it so it just shut itself off. So we they, once again we have all the water we need. We can do the laundry, we can do dishwashing, we can both take showers, it's not a problem. We have all the water we need. So Okay, back outside now and uh, just wrapping up this video. Um, I do want to say that I have two more, two more videos on my mind that I want to do. One pertains to uh, a pretty big problem we had with our solar electric system back in June. And uh, I don't know if you noticed from previous videos, but that generator sitting there is a is a new one. It's now a colder where I had a Generac before. But caused some major problems and I will make a video about it. Um, I, I think it'll be uh, pretty telling. So I also have planned to make a video to answer a lot of questions that I get asked on uh, some of my other videos, I get some of the same questions asked over and over. So I'll just make one and we'll go down the list and, and try to answer them. And hopefully uh, anybody thinking about doing something like this might help you out a little bit. We're, we're learning every day. Okay, well I guess that wraps it up and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the future.